thank you all for answering the questions from the audience. There are lots more questions that people have that we didn't have time for, but if you can stay afterward for a while, maybe you can talk individually to some of those people whose questions were not answered. It's now time for the closing statements, one and a half minutes each, and we will go in reverse order from what you uh, gave your opening statements. We will begin with Brian Steen. Okay, thank you very much. I enjoy these forums. Uh, I believe we have uh, many issues that we can all learn from in terms of the good and maybe the not so good. I'm looking forward to working with the City of Palo Alto as a council member. I see many large decisions coming before us, and small decisions, where we, you will need decisive leadership to be able to uh, protect what the city has, protect our character, and to be able to move into the future on a sustainable basis. And when I say sustainable basis, I'm not stri strictly talking about conservation resources, even though that's my professional background. I'm talking about living within our means. I'm, I'm talking about having a budget that we know is going to be in the black for years to come. It's not just this particular year. We need to have uh, approval of land use decisions that are also sustainable into the future. These big decisions that are coming before us, uh, whether it's high-speed rail, uh, Stanford Hospital, these decisions need to be done with the future in mind, and so the decisions that we make now will be able to live with those future uh, decisions and the the possible impacts of those down the road, and I don't want to be able to look back 20 years from now and regret those decisions. So I look forward to being on the council. My name is Brian Steen. I'd like to have your vote. Thank you very much. Nancy Shepard. Thank you. Throughout my, volunteer Throughout my volunteer time in Palo Alto, I've always been looking out for the future. When I was working in the schools, it was how can we keep classroom program? How can we organize private dollars to come into the classroom so we don't have to go through wrenching cuts? I've worked on a nonprofit board now where we've been building civic engagement, and I got to lead a, an organ, a, a series of meetings that were about making a good community better. I have been out precinct walking and in campaigning for almost every parcel task and bond that's been part of our community to try to get the libraries in and classroom program and new schools. So today uh, I'm looking at my campaign and I've brought in young people to try to work with me to keep this going for our future. Because I have these skills to bring stakeholders together, form collaborations, I don't mind taking on the big issues and the tough questions, and I get results. I've been endorsed for my values and my principles by many organizations, hundreds of people, citizens, and many dozens of elected officials and formerly elected officials, including jo State Senator Joe Samidian and Liz Niss from the County Board of Supervisors and I've just gotten endorsed from the Palo Alto Weekly. So please vote for me on November 3rd. Thank you so much. Dan Darkwell. We are a great community with tremendous resources, and like most cities, we face lots of challenges, some of our making, some not. I know the city very well as a parent and resident, as a community volunteer, and as a local businessman. My managerial skills will be very valuable in framing and achieving the strategic objectives, making sure we balance revenue and expenses while still preserving our way of life. So the things I'll focus on are a business-friendly climate and a city administration that supports that, a business license tax that puts the city on a more secure revenue foundation, more and more effective outreach to the citizens so that the council decisions reflect both the desires and the wisdom of our community. The importance of seeing the city and labor negotiations in context so we recognize the needs of each side. Although I went and spoke with the union, I did not ask for their endorsement, but I thought it was very important to show an openness to listen and collaborate. We need to create, of course, a sustainable level of development so that we don't jeopardize our schools, our resources, our infrastructure. My goal is to work collaboratively with the council so that we do achieve strategic results. My judgment will blend analysis, critical thinking, and a desire to make sure it incorporates the wishes and the desires of the community. Thanks for this opportunity to share the afternoon with you, and I ask for your vote. 
Chris Gaither. Well, I'll say it uh, up front. I asked for your vote on November 3rd, and I do thank you for coming here. Um, when I was managing properties, uh, primarily in a senior community and disabled community, one of my residents came home after being in Lytton Gardens eight months. She stepped off the bus and she cried and she said, baby, I'm so glad to be home. And I had to hold myself back um, from crying. I had to rush in. I said, let me go get your cart and um, I'll be right back. And as I went through the doors, I started crying and I said, this is why I do this. I believe that public service is very important and I have the skills from everything that I've done in the past from managing affordable housing to being a financial analyst to operating two businesses selling cruises and tours and from providing home health care to quadriplegic gentlemen to be a provider in the community to bridge gaps and I feel that I can do the job in terms of issues that are current before us Business license tax, I say no. Let's find more creative reasons or ways to get money in. High-speed rail, I say no wall. And if we have to live with it, uh, we need to go around the 280 corridor. And I say long term, we need to work with our police force and build a better community relationship with the police. And we need to help our schools so that not one more student feels they need to take their life. We are a human resource rich community. We can pull together and we can make sure that students know that, you know, it gets better along the way. We are all living examples of that. Thank you. Lori Klein. Thank you. If there's one takeaway that you have today uh, with respect to me, I hope it is experience, leadership, results. In my opening remarks, I spoke about my experience and my leadership, but let me use my last uh, remarks here today to talk about results because I think that's really what uh, it's always all about. And let me just give you three of uh, in the most recent time frame. One, uh, during my time as mayor last year, we passed Measure N, the library bond issue, finally uh, getting us on the, the path to solving a long-term term problem in our community, our, our libraries. Uh, the council was unanimous, uh, and we worked very hard to keep it unanimous, because one of the problems in the previous library vote was that the council was badly split. Uh, I think that was leadership that produced results. Uh, second, we've taken a major step forward in the passage of our mandatory green building ordinance and our climate protection plan, uh, both of which are uh, models being used by other cities around the country. Lastly, one of the reasons I ran four years ago was uh, I didn't like what, some of the things going on in City Hall. The Palo Alto Weekly said I was the candidate four years ago that was most critical of the then city manager. Uh, we hired a new city manager last year while I was mayor, and I think that he is helping us produce a different culture. I think that we've had some problems with our city administration that are uh, not that are subtle, that uh, there's a culture that's not as good as it should be, and I think that we're on the path to correcting that. And uh, those are what I uh, hope you'll remember, experience, leadership, results. Thank you. Karen Holman. Palo Alto faces some very difficult and complex issues. My eight years on the Planning and Transportation Commission, two years of chair, as chair, have prepared me to be able to take a seat and be effective immediately. Come January, we have four council members who will have but two years experience. I believe my Planning and Transportation Commission experience is very valuable to take to the City Council and I'm prepared to do that and offer it for you. As a, on the Planning and Transportation Commission, I've demonstrated that I can lead problem solve, work with, and learn from others, including the public. I've been honored to earn the endorsement and support and trust of many of you. I've also been endorsed by the Sierra Club, California League of Conservation Voters, Santa Clara County Democratic Party, and several other organizations, and yesterday was endorsed by the Palo Alto Weekly and the Palo Alto Post. I believe in zoning for what we want, living within our means, and honoring the public trust, and I'm committed to carrying those through. Thank you. Leon Leong. The City Council needs new voices, new voices that will represent your views. If you believe, as I believe, that housing density should not be increased unless school overcrowding and traffic congestion is solved first, please vote for me to represent your view. If you believe that the City can do more to attract businesses to our, and provide for our economic health in our city and a broader tax base, please vote for me to represent your view. 
if you believe that the business license tax will not help to attract new businesses to our town, please vote for me to represent your view. If you believe that the business license tax is unfair because it taxes some of our small businesses three times what it, for hiring an employee than what a uh, big business would uh, be taxed for hiring an employee, please vote for me to represent your view. If you believe a budget which has grown over 40 percent since 2003 has room for efficiency and savings and restructuring, please vote for me to represent your view. And lastly, if you think we need, the city needs to do more to fight the high-speed rail so that it doesn't divide our community, please vote for me to represent your view. Thank you very much for listening. Corey Levins. As a first-time candidate, I've had a terrific experience meeting Palo Altans and learning all about why they love the city. But I've also gotten an earful of their dissatisfaction and discontent with, with city government. It, it all seems to come from the so-called Palo Alto process, which is turned into a catchphrase for everything wrong with Palo Alto. Uh, in my opinion, though, it, the Palo Alto process is endless review, reaching a decision, and then changing it when the last loudest voice is heard. I believe that that we 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 need to change this process, but. Now, how do we do that? The, the, the Palo Alto process, I think, is made possible through the comprehensive plan, which provides for reasoned and, and informed decision making. But it's also the, the process by which it's run amok. Now, we can cure this by enacting regulations that strictly tie the hands of people in, in, in enforcing things, but I think that's an overreaction. Rather, I think what's necessary is to change the, the culture and philosophy at, at, at the top. And how do we do that? We do that by electing council members that have not participated in the Palo Alto process on any commissions that they've served on or, or as council members. We do that by changing the, 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 the philosophy of council members, one council member at a time, and and I hope you'll support I'll be that, that council member. I'll have a new voice and a new perspective, and I hope you'll support me on November 3rd. Gail Price. Uh, thank you. Experience, vision, and character. I have a long history of community service to Palo Alto and other communities as well. I'm a certified planner and, as you know, two terms on the Palo Alto School Board. I feel that my record as an elected official and community member is clear. I am known to uh, look at uh, complex problems very carefully. I'm a proponent of strategic planning, and I am fair, deliberate, and measured in my assessment. It's very easy to follow my thinking, and I think people have always appreciated that. My goal is also to be relatively brief in my comments, which is useful. Um, the other issue is uh, I am a compassionate person. I feel very strongly about uh, social justice and a variety of issues related to that. I think we, again, as I mentioned earlier in my opening remarks, the issue of a caring community has many dimensions. I am from Barron Park. My three sons went through the Palo Alto schools, and I just wanted to note that. Um, I've been endorsed by um, Congresswoman Anna Issue, uh, Senator Joe Semidian, eight separate organizations, including the Santa Clara County Democratic Party, uh, Sierra Club, California League of Conservation Voter Voters, and many, many others. Most importantly, the, the good and uh, caring people of Palo Alto. And I very much appreciate this opportunity today to speak to you. If you have questions, please contact me uh, directly. It's been a pleasure running in this race, and my website is www.gailprice.org. Thank you very much. Jim Gray. Thanks to the League for um, having us here today. Thanks to the League for having us here today. This thing on? There we go. Thank you for uh, your time for coming here this afternoon. And I wanted to uh, put aside the issues and 
reveal some personal information that would differentiate me from uh, maybe some of the other candidates and give you some something to uh, walk away from. You know, it's easy to champion oak trees, but I'm, I want to set a model to lead the community in conversations in topics that challenge our comfort level. Uh, we have uh, the topic of community, police community relations. We have uh, a long history of racial ho uh, profiling. Uh, we need to talk about banning tasers. And these are things that will require civil discourse. And our town isn't really good about um, talking about contentious issues without name calling, uh, even talking about union issues. So I want to cha champion us to put aside our personal comforts and really get to the heart of some things that, that care. Things I want to mention are my three children, Michael, Julia, twins, and Catherine, seven, seven, and ten, and my, my older daughter, Catherine, ten. Uh, my wife is a PTA president at Wanabrioni School. We've been committed to this town. I work for the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. I saw Lucille Packard's vision. I worked on it for seven years. We completed it. And my wife and I met there. We adopted our children. And we're committed to this community. And I really want to serve. Mark Weiss. <clears throat> Uh, my name is Mark Weiss. I'm running for city council, although running maybe isn't the most precise word. I'm sort of taking this at my own pace in certain ways. It's more like a stroll, more like a dance. Democracy is a dance or like a philosophical walk in the tradition of Rebecca Solnit's recent book. Um, I want to say vote down the BLT, the business license tax, vote against Measure A. It's regressive. It's unfair to small business. It's poorly written. Think of it as a referendum on the current council and the incumbency. And if you're for a new direction, I think a couple of us represent more like the Obama generation. I want to say I'm quite proud that our president won the Nobel Prize. And let's see what we can all do with, with him. And I'm also very disappointed there isn't more talk about social issues, uh, morals. What are the values of our, of our community? I cannot believe that our community is just about um, numbers on a spreadsheet. I cannot believe that. I've been here my, most of my life, 35 years. I'm 45 now. Also, I've been meaning to say all week, uh, someone brought to my attention, this is the eighth anniversary of the U.S. engagement in Afghanistan, and that does not represent me. And I'm surprised, you know, uh, Beyond War was started in Palo Alto, and they say, uh, think globally, act locally. Uh, I'm disappointed in what we do in Iraq. Uh, Oaxaca, there were, it's our sister city. There were serious human ra rights violations in Oaxaca in a military response to some strikers. I never heard peep from the city council here. Berkeley condemned it. We didn't say peep. I went to Oaxaca as an exchange student. Um, I also say I, 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 I'm not representing this, but I did send in by mail uh, my response to the questionnaire, and uh, I'm kind of old school that way. Victor Frost. Thank you. It is as clear as an Indian spotted pony on the Lone Prairie that there is something very wrong with Palo Alto City Council and the Palo Alto Police Department. We must work to change this and to resolve these problems to a competent level. This, in turn, will improve the quality of life here in Palo Alto. Soon I'll be starting my annual Thanksgiving food drive for the homeless. Please help us. Thank you. And John Hackman. Uh, again, John Hackman. This election is about experience. Is it on? <laughs> Thank you. Passing the box. On? Again, John Hackman. This election is about experience and judgment and problem solving. I've been asked to run and I've agreed to do so because I believe I can help our city at this time. In problem solving, we have three major issues I would like to address. The spending issue with the pensions, up to two to six million dollars for senior employees with long-term service, not sustainable. 
with respect to the process. We need to have clearer communications, less late night meetings, better notification deadlines for the press. The, the daily paper should not be uh, hearing meetings after their nightly deadline. The public is not informed. Packets need to be out or, uh, at least five days before the meeting so that the weekly can uh, inform us in that Friday issue of what's coming up. And I also in, intend, as I've stated, to help support business. That is what is going to produce more revenue. And this revenue will allow us to keep the many valued employees we have in our city and the high level of services we do enjoy. I'm happy to see many of those city employees uh, here today. I am, am able to devote the time now to work for the city of Palo Alto. I have been a teacher for many years. I was a general practice attorney working on rights for people. Please vote for John Hackman to help me solve your problems this fall. Thank you all for being so cooperative. I didn't have to use my gavel at all. And I want to say thank you to the volunteer workers who made this forum possible. Many of them are here, some of them are not, but they've been working hard for the last few weeks. And finally, I want to thank you all for being such an attentive audience and asking such good questions. And now let me pass the mic back to Phyllis Castle for some closing remarks. Thank you, Irene, for being our moderator for this forum. Thank you, candidates, for participating. Um, I still have a hard time figuring out who I'm going to vote for, so that means we had a good event and you presented yourselves well. Special thanks to Pat Bendekite, Veronica Tincture, and Karen Sunback for doing the detailed work that happens behind the scenes to make an event like this happen. Thank you to the question sorters, Arthur Keller and Alice Smith. Thanks to Pat Saffer for her warnings to all of you and you all behaved. Uh, thank you to Vivian Blumenkamp, Mary Cottrell, Litzy Indigan, Bernice Lerb, and Lee Sendelback for collecting the questions and sorting them out. All of you are great and you make a forum like this a great event. And finally, a big thank you to the Media Center for all the work of bringing this forum to you and it will be aired so that you can look at pieces of this again and you can have your friends also watch it. Don't forget smartvoter.org for more information and really don't forget to vote on November 3rd or before if you're voting by mail. More voter information is in the back of the room for the league, including our membership forms and there's candidate information out in the lobby. Now please join the candidates for talk and good afternoon and thank you all for coming.